ladies and gentlemen dr leo is here as we wind up on the metabolism of macronutrients i would like to give you a reminder on the carbohydrates metabolism remember we've talked about carbohydrates multiple times so this one will be an easy one for you to understand because just a brush off now in your bloodstream we always have a stable amount of blood sugars which is glucose whether you've eaten or not eaten your blood sugar levels will maintain within a certain range when you go and prick your finger to do that random blood sugar test what they are measuring is is your blood sugars in form of glucose running between 3.5 to around 6.9 millimoles per liter if yes you're considered to be safe in terms of blood sugars and diabetes if not you're told to actually start either dietary modifications or uh, if further tests are done you can actually be initiated to drugs uh, that treat the symptoms of diabetes i'm very intentional with that now understand that in your blood the blood sugar level is 3.5 all the way to 6.9 it varies depending on where you are and also the units can actually vary but this is in millimoles per liter below this 3.5 we call that hypoglycemia above 6.9 that is hyperglycemia high and low blood sugars what are the effects of these two when you have low blood sugars and your body is totally uh, used to consuming uh, sugars and carbohydrates of course the body sends you into crazy cravings and you want to just grab that soda and drink or you might end up seeing blood vision getting confused getting very irritated and these are basically symptoms of people who are super consumers and addicted to carbohydrates these are people who work in offices and they snack all the time and when their glucose levels goes down as i saying the konanguvu kidogo have very minimal energy and they need to eat something to boost my energy understand that is not you boosting your energy because energy is not coming from the stomach nor, it, nor is it coming from these blood sugars it's actually coming from the fat cells and the muscle cells and you've talked about that channel of breaking down these things through the acetyl coa and into the citric acid or the krebs cycle so you can review and uh, unlearn so when you eat a cake now what happens is in the next about one hour two hours you will absorb glucose from that cake when you eat brown or white chapati when you eat brown or white rice it doesn't matter the body does not absorb colors it doesn't even recognize the colors the body knows glucose or when you eat a fruit the body knows fructose or when you drink milk the body knows galactose this galactose so that tells you that these are the three sugars that will be absorbed into the bloodstream not the brown ugali not the poshomel ugali so when you consume that ugari, that chapati or rice, what you're getting is glucose. And the weird part is that glucose will cause a spike in blood sugars after an hour or so. And then you start going above 6.9 to 7, 8, 9 or even 10. Some of you even operate at 20. And that is very dangerous to the system because the body understands if glucose is going up in the body, that glucose can harm your eyes, that glucose can harm your kidneys, your heart, your brain and all that. So it has to bring it down back to the normal range. And what does that? is actually insulin that is produced by the pancreas so when glucose is going up the pancreas produces insulin and that insulin brings the blood glucose down but how and this is exactly the same uh, way to interpret the mode of action of insulin so insulin is like a key and its role is to come because these cells the fat cells and the muscle cells which are the storage uh, sites for uh, excess glucose they have these keyholes known as receptors so Insulin comes in and binds to these keyholes and when it binds there, it opens up these cells. So it opens them up so that glucose flows from blood into these cells, either for utilization in the skeletal muscles or for storage in the fat cells. This is where the problem comes in because excessive consumption of carbohydrates, every time you're eating uh, after two hours and all you're eating is carbohydrates, what is happening is you're pumping these sugars from the blood into these cells. And mostly for storage because you cannot tell us that you'll work out enough to actually burn how uh, the much of sugar that you're actually eating because also not only sugar in form of glucose that you're actually consuming there's fructose there is galactose and all that can actually be overwhelming so therefore exercising to burn whatever you've eaten is a waste of your time okay so this takes it into the cells for storage specifically in the fat cells and that's where the dump size starts being created because i want you to see this as we are pumping glucose into these cells, of course, we are reducing the amount of glucose in the bloodstream, right? But insulin is called a hypoglycemic agent, including the insulin injection that you take, the one that comes from a cow or a pig. So what it does is it lowers blood sugars below normal level. It takes you into hypo. 
and now you start craving again that's why most people who take this they are told to eat with a snack most of them who take this they're going to hypo they get the confusion and they're quick to jump on soda to just bring back their glucose levels so they are never in a stable state they are constantly in a very unstable state they take it higher with diets and they take it lower with insulin therapy and that's a waste of time okay that's what you're not told so insulin comes in to bring blood sugars below normal level and now you crave again you eat you raise blood sugars so if you want to lead a healthy life you must maintain insulin at low and a stable blood sugar so that you don't have the cravings and you don't have uh, the food addiction now insulin pumps glucose from this into these cells and when that happens is you're going to store it we are storing it here for further use remember the body is not stupid so it's actually pumping glucose here into the fat cells for storage so that one day there will be a natural calamity you will suffer and you will not access food therefore you will need to burn what you've stored in the stores so these fat cells are actually our stores so they store glucose in form of fat so that we can access it later on but most of you don't even ever tap into the fat cells to access this fat to burn it out because you're eating five meals a day you're snacking in between meals you never fast you never exercise so this is always being pushed to be full now remember as you're pumping glucose into these fat cells they have an ability to expand to accommodate how much you're eating and as they expand you start adding weight and growing fat that's how you start getting to be told you're fat and you start complaining your body you're being body shamed the reality is you've eaten yourself enough to this and this has to teach you a lesson because this is not coming from genes this is actually coming from your plate so stop blaming genes and change that plate it's that simple okay so when you're pumping this here you're actually expanding the fat cells this the, the abdomen the adipose tissue and you start adding weight and becoming obese and at some point you'll not be able to store any sugar in these cells because they're already full and everything you eat will remain in blood that is now chronic hyperglycemia aka diabetes type 2 and that is a serious problem but when you're pumping it into the muscle cell let's say you're exercising you need a lot of glucose for the muscles so therefore you pump glucose from blood into the muscle cells and utilize it uh, for energy okay because again remember for us to get energy we tap either into the fat cells or in the muscle cells for stored energy and then we utilize it as energy that is also explained now once you understand this you'll know why you are obese you'll know why you are diabetic the problem is if this is already full and now you're confirmed to be type 2 diabetic you're given medication that will actually continue pumping glucose from blood into the already filled cells does it make sense you answer in the comment section now you know that's the reason why for you to actually recover from some of these conditions you must empty the dump site instead of focusing on pumping glucose into the dump site already so simply empty this by dropping the carbohydrates because you don't need them at this moment in time so that you can actually burn this and then start fasting because fasting will make sure that insulin levels are going down when they are going down you're busy burning so when your insulin is going up you're busy storing when your insulin is going down you're busy burning and on that note foods that are rich in fat fat is the only food or macronutrient that does not spike insulin levels that tells you when you eat fatty meats what you're doing is or when you eat high fat uh, diet what te that tells you is you'll maintain insulin at low and therefore you'll end up burning the stores and emptying the stores to lose weight that tells you fats you need fats to actually lose fat so when you're trying to lose weight your concentration should be on eating fatty meats or a fatty diet to actually make sure that insulin is low and through that you get to burn the stores and empty them and then you shrink and you lose that weight so that is very important don't be lied that when you eat fatty meats you grow fat it's not making sense that when you eat eggs you grow fat that's not true when you eat the fats you maintain insulin at low you're busy burning and losing the weight now understand this sugars or carbohydrates because carbohydrates are what we call the sugars they will be broken down to the simplest carbohydrate possible for absorption they are called the monosaccharides we only have three we have glucose we have fructose glucose is the uh, the ugali the rice and the chapati sugar we have fructose the fruits and honey sugar sometimes it's actually present in processed foods and is labeled high corn uh, fructose syrup and then we have galactose that is actually coming from the milk now the metabolism for this galactose which is a milk sugar will be converted to glucose and then you'll have three fats and i'll talk about those three fats when i'll be talking about glucose but anyway let's go back to that glucose so you convert galactose to glucose and now this glucose has three fats one is it will be sent into the mus muscle cells the skeletal muscle cells for activity you're working out you need atp and energy to be sent there for you to get the energy number two 
Some of it will be sent into the liver and it will be converted to glycogen. Basically, one glucose molecule plus another, you combine the two, you form glycogen. And you're forming that glycogen for temporary storage, just in case you need super energy faster, the liver releases glucose. Just because you've woken up and the body is preparing you for the new day, the glucose that you consumed the previous evening is actually stored in the liver as glycogen. And this is what is pumped into your system during the morning uh, to prepare you for the new day. And this is the reason why you should never eat uh, morning breakfast because if you do that, all the glycogen that was stored in the liver will be pumped into the fat cells. So stop eating the, that morning breakfast, okay? Now that makes sense here. Now the last channel, because one is energy ATP, two is glycogen, and three is excess of all these glucose that you're eating without utilizing shall be pumped into the fat cells for storage and you start adding weight. That tells you drinking a lot of milk can actually add you weight. As just the same way carbohydrates are going to add you weight because the fat of galactose is glucose and the fat of glucose is the three. Good, those are the two covered. The one that is more dangerous because it actually fools most of our doctors that you know what? This one is a safe sugar. It's a natural sugar. They call it natural sugar. That's a waste of time. This is not a natural sugar. It's just a sugar. The body does not know natural and synthetic. It knows all this. Table sugar is actually glucose and fructose. So the body does not know table sugar. It knows glucose and fructose. It takes it to the metabolic pathways. Sugarcane is fructose. Honey is fructose. Uh, processed foods have fructose because it's the sweetest sugar. And it actually gives you a dopamine release. You release the dopamine, you feel good about eating that fruit. And now you become a sugar addict, but you're in denial. So therefore, drop those things if you're told you're suffering from any metabolic condition and you need to reverse it. Now, fructose has three metabolic pathways. Number one, fructose can be converted to glucose. You still get the three fats of glucose. Number two, fructose, the major pathway is conversion of fructose to fats that are called triglycerides. Now, understand, the more you eat those fruits, the more you get triglycerides, the more you add fat to your liver because triglycerides, your liver does not know how to store fats. It doesn't even like it. So it packages these fats into LDL, sends them into the system, okay, for storage or utilization into the cells. However, the more you consume the fructose, the more you put on the triglycerides in the liver, and the more now you start developing fats in the liver. That's what we call a fatty liver disease, a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is basically the mother to insulin resistance, that is kidney disease, heart problems, stroke, atherosclerosis, and all that. Now, this is the problem because I've seen people saying fruits are healthy because they have fructose and it's a natural sugar, but they don't consider this. What fools most nutritionists and doctors is fructose does not cause a spike in glucose. Of course, it's not, it's not glucose, so it will not cause a spike in glucose unless it is metabolized later on to give you glucose. That will cause a spike in blood sugars. However, as you consume fructose, you get a fatty liver, you get insulin resistance. Insulin resistance means high glucose and high insulin. So at the end of the process, you still end up with high glucose in the system as a result of consuming those fruits. And I would like you to do a test. Eat that fruit and then take a blood sugar test after an hour and then tell me about it. Okay. And then the last pathway for this fructose is an enzyme that is called fructose kinase converts fructose into uric acid. But remember this, fructose kinase is just an activator of another enzyme called AMP deaminase. So AMP deaminase is the one that actually uh, makes fructose to be converted to uric acid. Now I've seen most people saying uric acid causes gout. I don't disagree with that. But the reality is uric acid is actually produced by the body when you're fasting. That tells you it's a very good compound in terms of healing and inflammation. And arthritis is part of inflammation. However, excess of it will cause you problems in terms of uh, precipitating in joints and causing you gouty arthritis. But then they tell you red meat is the one that has this. No problem. When you eat red meat that has uric acid, this uric acid will be excreted from the system through urine. Because if you have functional kidneys, they will excrete the excess uric acid. Therefore, you'll never have excess in the system. Again, remember, it is the function of the kidneys to excrete excess of these waste products. However, if the kidney is actually problematic, therefore excretion of uric acid is now limited, this uric acid level is still going up in blood. Now that becomes a problem. Now we blame meat for what sugar did to us because sugar is the one that actually destroys the kidneys. Fructose causes insulin resistance that destroys the kidneys. Therefore, you cannot excrete excess uric acid. Now look at it this way. In terms of fructose, it is double tragedy. Why? The first tragedy is fructose will later on give you fats that will give you insulin resistance that will destroy your kidneys. That is one. Now number two, you've destroyed your kidneys and then the same same fructose is being converted to uric acid and now this uric acid level starts going up because we are unable to excrete it through urine.
through the kidneys. What do we expect? A lot of uric acid in the system that we cannot excrete. And the body has to actually crystallize this and sense it into the joints. And now you have gouty arthritis. So if you look deeply into this, you will realize that fructose is the major enemy in uric acid and gouty arthritis. And I will tell you this, I will challenge you to see this. How many of you have gouty arthritis? They have dropped red meat but they are still suffering from arthritis. Why? Because they are consuming fruits and honey. They just changed sugar to sugar. They thought they, they are doing honey is natural and they don't have a problem. But you have you've had this arthritis for the longest period of time. You've not been eating meat, you've not been taking salt and all that. You've been on drugs for arthritis but you're not getting any better. Why don't you think outside the box? Why don't you just drop the fruits and see what happens to you? Because you lower the amount of fructose. You will improve on your kidney function through easing up on insulin resistance. You will be able to excrete excess uric acid from the system. If any case, there will be no much coming in because fructose is not being consumed as much. Possibly from the red meat, yes, which is well done. And now your kidneys are improving, so you are excreting excess of it. And you will never suffer from gout again. So why don't we follow this instead of giving you cold chicin, giving you painkillers, giving you steroids for gouty arthritis? Yet we know the real case is the sugar that is called fructose. And this sugar is very dangerous because it lies to doctors that is actually a good one because it doesn't cause a spike in blood sugars instantly, the glucose. Because yes, it's not glucose, it's actually fructose. So now you have your answers. So this is the metabolic pathway of glucose and the carbohydrates. And these three should be taken uh, in cautions. If you have a metabolic condition and you want to recover faster, avoid this. Avoid them. You don't need them. You've seen from the pathways that I've just explained about the citric acid cycle, You've seen energy is not coming from you consuming carbohydrates. It's actually coming from uh, there's the reservoirs in the muscle cells and the fat cells. And sometimes in the liver in form of glycogen. So yes, again, there's no deficiency condition for consuming carbohydrates. So the, the, the less the carbohydrates in your diet, the better. Okay? And fasting is very key in terms of the healing processes. So I thought you should understand this because again, this lays a background for our discussions in terms of how carbohydrates are actually affecting the system. So if we ever talk about it, you'll simply refer to this video and get to understand deeper.